Happy Hump Day, Knock Off Nation. Danny and Bruce here for a Wednesday night throwdown as we uh, transition into the weekend. Third podcast of this month, riding off uh, the momentum of Josie, then Dallin Murphy. Mm -hmm. He was a great guy, Dallin Murphy. Really enjoyed his company as well. Productive month. We're... We seem to be getting some momentum for this shit too. It feels like the probably the most productive month we've had in terms of new listeners enhancing that knockoff nation. Like we're really pushing that knockoff nation now. I think we're up we're up over fourteen hundred in terms of followers. The downloads on SoundCloud are looking good. We're feeling the love, so we're gonna fucking put it back to knockoff <laughs> nation. Like this is some good shit, man. I'm enjoying the absolute fuck out of this. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. And it's like uh I really enjoy the the different model of chatting to um, chatting to interesting people that are doing different things that aren't necessarily just your mates and stuff like that. But it's also good to take it back to the old school and and just kick it back with a bit of bit of captains on a Wednesday night for sure. Ooh wee! We got our uh, we got our nation out there for sure. We got lots of boys fucking pumping up the tires and helping us get guests yeah. and shit like that. Like Benny Elliott, Chicken, like yeah, some Justin knockoff Vinny. hardcores, man. Justin yeah. Vinny, there's. Regular listeners now, and as long as they're listening, we've always said it. As long as they're listening, we're going to keep doing it. But yeah. Philip, we're only just starting too. Shout we, out the uh, the G Unit group, group text. What's up? I've got about fucking four different bro chats going on at the moment, man. It's like hard to get work done. She's just distracting, man. <laughs> for the weekend, for example, like and all sort of groups of mates and shit do it as well, where everyone's on the WhatsApp chat. So it's just one big forum. Quite literally turned my phone off for 20, <laughs> for twenty four hours. Like the, my yeah. miss, missus had 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 a bet with me. Like <laughs> you can't go twenty four hours without your phone. I'm yeah, like, nah, you know nah, I, I can. I, I, I predicted can. that straight up as soon as you went like dark and yeah. and could see that you weren't checking texts and shit. I was like, <laughs> for sure, he's gone out to uh, yeah. gone out to a little island in Morton Bay yeah. and fucking switched off the phone. It was it was a complete switch off. Managed to do the twenty four hours too. It went went by pretty quickly. Rancho Relaxo yeah. spec sort of set up over there, but um. Come back, turn my phone on. I've got 206 WhatsApp <laughs> messages and 17 Snapchats. Like, everyone is connected to that yeah. shit. And it's quite, yeah. it's a conversation just back and forth. Fuck That's all it is. And when you get like more than, you know, three or four people in a, in a group chat, it can get to those numbers really quick. And yeah. it can just be somebody correcting their spelling for five texts. It's like, bang, there's yeah. a tally of putting, five. Putting a little asterisk next to a <laughs> fucking word that they spelt wrong, putting it correctly yeah. on that line. Yeah. It's hilarious. Fuck, no. autocorrect, soz. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was scrolling through my own Twitter feed, uh, like, only recently True. as well, but um, I tried. It's a to funny do. ride for that shit, right? Mm. Like look, looking back in time to seeing seeing where you were. Mine's like mostly sports related and yeah, the odd bit of slamming people on reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Twitter Twitter is an interesting one because it's purely text, so it's like, what do you have to say? Mm. Whereas you know, Instagram is essentially a photo album, right? So you can go back and everyone's used to looking at old photos and stuff like that, and you cringe a little bit or get nostalgic or whatever but i honestly feel like my instagram well instagram in general is like a modern day photo album and it oh, and i really feel that you know the fucking digital age man you can you can take so many photographs and just the 90 99 percent of them are total shit that you just throw away but mm. you end up holding on to them because of digital and it's just like or you'll take the same photo that you would have taken on like a film camera where you've only got one sort of chance at getting that shot you know you're not gonna you're not gonna waste your whole film taking mm. 10 10 photos of the one shot so you just make that shot count more whereas with an iphone it's like oh no you move and and all of a sudden you just have fucking gigabyte upon gigabyte of like shitty data mm. and it's just like i don't know i don't feel any need to keep anything outside of instagram really like I still do. I still have like my iPhoto on my laptop is just chock a block full of years worth of, mm. you know, multiple photos of the one thing and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like Instagram for me, I think I think I started it in um two thousand and twelve and uh and I like to I like that timeline, you know, like mm. I mean a lot of it is fucking you know, selected moments of your life. There's a lot of your life that's not shown, obviously, oh, because yeah, yeah you basically sure. holiday. Picks, because if if know? people uh, if people start doing that, it becomes excessive. Or it's yeah. like, oh, I don't yeah, you posted like, forty photos in a row, yeah, and that's come up in my feed. I don't really give a fuck that no. you're drinking coffee at your desk. You correct, know? correct, most <laughs> definitely. Let's let a little insight into the shit that you're interested in. I think that's what the sort of it's a reflection of the self and yeah. your own personal interest where. If you're sitting there taking a shit, taking a selfie <laughs> with like mood as the caption or whatever, it's like 
en- <laughs> enough's enough. Like, I, yeah. I was critical of Joe Rogan on that on one of those WhatsApp chats that we had where people were asking, oh, like, do you, do you follow Rogan? Or, or we're talking about Rogan and they said... I was like, no, I had, I had to tap out on his on his Instagram. I follow him on Twitter, so I see all of his updated thoughts and stuff like that. But there's only so much elk and eggs on a fucking <laughs> breakfast plate that I can stand, man. Like, we get uh, it. You eat yeah. eggs and jalapenos, <laughs> bro. <laughs> He's a savage on there. Like, but then he'll he'll put photos of his new running shoes as he's out doing yeah. a hike and stuff. And yeah. like that. That's, that's excessive for me. Yeah, and I'm on a limited data cap. So if you're <laughs> fucking out there hiking and uh, your sunglasses are fogged up with sweat, I get it, mate. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to see it, Joe. That's like that. Um, I had to check out. I listened to Joe Rogan's podcast um, with Jocko Willink, the most recent one, where he's going on about his uh, how his Instagram is important, like uh, photos of his watch or something. And I'd, I'd never seen Jocko Willink's Instagram before, so I went on it, and it's literally fucking photos of his watch, mm-hmm. like every day, the same like yeah. shitty black and white photo of a digital Timex yeah. and it's like it's 4am I'm hungry I'm a <laughs> savage that, is it that sort of context yeah yeah basically yeah. <laughs> which is like I don't know that's all well and good and I appreciate that sentiment but it but I don't know for for a visual platform where it's photography and you have an opportunity to like look at some piece of crazy visual art or you know some hilarious cartoon or I guess it depends what you're into but yeah. but for me given that it is like a you know a visual forum it's like make it look all right you know <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just photo yeah. of your fucking hairy yeah, leg yeah. and your and your vibram yeah. foot sock like <laughs> yeah. come on just like these toe shoes <laughs> like. you know to, to to in his defense though he um it's all about the caption for mm. him he posts some shitty photo and then he he writes out a well thought a, a well thought out idea yeah, and like, you know, be, be uses com- that for a platform. Whereas I'll post a photo and like an emoji will be the fucking, yeah, I'll the caption. Guilty. Cause guilty. Yeah, I'm I mean, guilty like, yeah, fine. I'm not talking to the masses. No, you know? no, that's like, right. It's, it's, it's basically mates and family. Yeah, on it, there. it is like, for sure. I've got maybe 130 people that follow yeah. me on that. And I'm, and some uh, random young dude from Malaysia, shout out Irino, who been with man, been man. with uh, da- at Danny's view for a while now, man. Loyal, loyal Appreci- the appreciate call. the likes and shit, bro. We got uh, H- Henry Piang like following uh, our missus, like my missus page, and he he's been loyal to the game for years, man. He tried to <laughs> add me dead set five or six <laughs> times. I'm like, Henry, I'm not man. letting you in, guy. You yeah. already got enough photos of my children and my missus. Like, I'm not letting you in mine, man. Like, I play uh, golf. Like yeah. I, play, I play golf. <laughs> That's my instrument. My fucking uh, kid and my golf. <laughs> But that's what it is. It's like, funny, I, yeah, eh? like, for sure. Because I've I've also followed like people that aren't famous that have you know a couple of hundred followers. But I'm like, oh, this dude lives down in fucking Chugan or something, mm. and he's like got sweet longboarding pics, and like it might even be you know it might even be. Fuck, I don't know, like not that many pics of him long, longboarding like eventually because it's like, you know, personal Instagram changes. So you mm. might follow somebody during a summer of their lives where it's like they were doing sick stuff every day or they were traveling crazy places mm. and then next thing you know, it's like coffee at the desk on, yeah, on fucking like, ooh, hate Mondays. <laughs> yeah, he's hating himself right now. He's fucking looking back through his own Instagram yeah, like, oh, yeah, fuck. yeah. And that's the thing like because it, it is such just like, Show us your best moments. And it's like we talked about on a previous podcast, there's a quote that's like comparison is the thief of joy. And I, I only heard mm. that recently and, and now I, I like – it's almost like a, a mantra to me. Like I, I fucking just naturally repeat it in my head a lot of the time when I sort of notice myself comparing mm. myself to other people and shit like that. Yep. And I think Instagram is like it's it's – you can be well guilty of that because you go to that search page and it's just a whole bunch of people doing cool shit. And like if you're doing something – on the grind or you're doing something that's not, you know, laying up by a fucking paradise school beach with a chick in a banger just looking smoke and bringing you a mojito or something. That's what my explore page is. (laughs) 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 Because you like this post, you get to see this. (laughs) Exactly, man. So you just feel like, oh, fuck, what are are all these people like doing that I'm not? But that's that's not the way it rolls. It's like it, it is. You look at your own page and it's like, oh shit, this is sick. But you don't see all that grind in there, you no, know. Like no, that's right. And and everybody in in one way, shape, or another, unless you're you know in the in the one percentile where you've just been given this incredible hand, Dan Bilzerian spec, like you've 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 made it in terms of you never have to worry about money again. Mm. 
But that's not without its pitfalls either. And we've seen that like with celebrity and, and fame and riches and shit like that, man. It doesn't equate to happiness. Oh, no. It Fuck doesn't, no. man. It doesn't. Sometimes it's like, you know, it's the actual like catalyst for unhappiness. Mm. Dis- disconnected from real people and real situations and just living in this fucking strange mm. bubble. Like imagine just being fucking... People using you for just, your money. Justin and like, Timberlake famous and shit. You'd have... Justin For Bieber. me, you'd have to keep, and I think a lot of these guys would in a certain context. You, your circle would have to be incredibly tight. So someone, even yeah. like someone like a Chris Hemsworth, the phonies, yeah, 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 these phonies hanging around like and a mixed martial arts based podcast. A lot of the time, and in, in that circle, you hear about people where it's like, man, the second I became champion, on came the hangers on. Where these people are like, yeah, I'm hanging out. This guy's the fucking man. He's got the, he's exactly. got the strap. That's you, what John, lose, John Jones was blaming exactly. for, for his like all these hangers on look, looking to party. Everyone wants a piece of him, world champion. Then you lose, and these people disappear. Like yeah. you go, BJ Penn, for example. I'm sure he had people on his coattails, incredibly, in his absolute prime. But now at 38, mm. he's, he is a legend. So there probably is, but that sort of same effect where a lot of people were hanging on, were like ah, B- BJ is just BJ now. Fuck you know what yeah, I mean? We're, we're going to try and be friends with Cody No Love and shit yeah. like that. You, you totally what? lose track of who's real. Like, mm. and and I think you see some people, and and Conor McGregor springs to mind in that. Uh, you know, every like everybody who's seen Conor McGregor's fucking Instagram knows that it's quite popular, mm. and uh, and there's this new thing. I don't know, newish with one of the recent updates with Instagram where um, if you're like, depending on how many followers you have, if you comment on somebody's photo, you know how they preview like two comments and then they'll sort of hide Mm. 50,000 others or whatever. If your follower numbers are the highest out of all the people that have commented on that photo, you'll appear in that little bit there. So it's like another little trick for promotion and you'll see chicks like, you know, that are famous for basically posting all photos of their ass and shit like that, that are just God giftedly beautiful. Commenting on <laughs> McGregor's shit. Or, yeah. They comment like straight fire, son, or something yeah. like that. Like, and these are ridiculously <laughs> fucking hot chicks, man. Yeah. Like, we're talking I like. Know. So, like, summer rain. Ten. Like, yeah, ten. Yeah. Hard ten. Hard dime pieces, yeah, man. Just, like, crazy. And, um, and, he stays loyal to his yeah. his childhood sweetheart in D mm. Devlin, man, yeah. and and now has a child with her and stuff like that. And that's, you know, the temptation of that crazy oh, fucking hot pussy. You seen him in those Vegas <laughs> Vegas pool parties doing an appearance Ooh. at like Wet Republic Shit, on a, a Sunday afternoon, mate. Just thirty birds in bikinis there around him, and just a guy want, like wanting him to smash. who's you know. A, f- a fighter and a fucking good, confident one at that, the amount of testosterone fucking surging through that dude's loins, like, I don't know, I don't know. I will fuck every one of you. <laughs> <laughs> I will fuck every yeah. one of these bitches. I can hit you from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that Eddie Alvarez, uh, He's just dropping that at Wet Republic. <laughs> <laughs> I could hit you from anywhere. Yeah, but... um. But no, but I mean, it, it goes to show, you know, the, and, and that's somebody who looks like they have their head screwed on in this crazy game of excessive fame, you know. It's just mm. like his status is fucking insane, man. He's like up there with the Justin Timberlakes and shit like that now, you know. He might not be as household a name as somebody like Justin Bieber, but um, fuck, man, he, he's getting to the masses and this, and this fight with... Floyd Mayweather is like is only going to increase that. Oh shit, yeah. But he's yeah, Floyd Floyd's another one. He's still got his he's still got his old man as his trainer. Is that uh, right? Uncle, uncle, uncle. His dad's uncle. on the scene a little bit. I think over the years they've had a few falling outs, get back together, fall out again. Like father son relationship yep. in like right in the spotlight as well too. Exactly. So a lot of money and shit. Coming Other phonies in. coming in. Fucking you side sure. with the wrong people. Some people are trying. No, you fucking old man's trying to rip you off, bro. Like exactly. You know, people get in your ear and fuck. That's in Vegas as well. Like the Sin City where they're based at. There'd be a yeah. lot of hustlers coming in yeah. out of there. So he's uh, it's his, his uncle Roger is on the scene now. But uh, what are we talking about in the context of that anyway? Oh, just fucking. Staying true to yeah. to smaller circles Precisely. and shit like that, you know, Precisely. And, and people that like are excessively successful, mm. like he's uh, see evidence of that. One of the quotes you mentioned a quote. One of them uh, that I said to myself this afternoon with uh, 
I'd only heard it recently. Uh, Jack Nicholson. He goes, uh, the less fucks you the give. The golfer or the... Uh, uh, the actor. The like, actor. Uh, departed and like the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, as good as it gets. Yeah. That <laughs> precise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other? What was the other? <laughs> like that's his most yeah. notable role. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like remember him? Yeah, later yeah. stage career rom com yeah, that he don't did. Go to like the, the Shining or like yeah, you just <laughs> go to that. The, who uh, was the chicken? Uh, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm Helen keep, Hunt. I keep, oh no, <laughs> I keep thinking of like De Niro with doing like Meet the Parents and Meet yeah. the Fuckers and that. But, um, he, he yeah, Nick, Nicholson's quote was yeah, the le- the more the less fucks you give, the happier you'll be. And I was in a situation this afternoon with Queensland Rail fucking. Just burnt me up inside. I'd already done like extended overtime at work. Just wanted to get home, wanted to eat, wanted to get changed, wanted to come do this. Roll up to Central Station, Brisbane CBD, and minimum hour waits on all trains in every direction in peak hour <laughs> midweek. Like the, there yeah. was already a driver sort- shortage in that organisation because of a colossal fuck up on their behalf, and now you've got a metropolitan CBD in mm. a first world country with. Zero backup plan if anything goes wrong. There's yeah. no no bus service to come in to transfer people, nothing like that. It's waited out for a minimum of an hour because there's a glitch. So mm. you're on your own. It's a gnarly situation that, eh? Because it's like, I think they're, I think they're basically, they must have to uh, like adhere to the government to a certain amount. I'm pretty sure they get like lots of subsidies and shit oh, like that. They're yeah. kind of their own thing, but not really. Like, mm. but, um, but yeah, it's just, I think it was like some sort of internal like union type fucking issue where they couldn't get their shit together and their their board of directors all like just shitty processes. Yeah. And, and resigned, like stood down, be- jumped before they would push. Yeah, them, right? exactly. Because they tried to open like a new a new train line and they, w- they were all right at keeping everything mm. just like we're running the trains, the same train. Second, they added that new train line and here you have to project manage this and fucking pull this off. Mm. They just fell apart and uh, it really shows you like how dependent you are on some stuff like that, you know. If you're, if you're in a mass CBD mm. and like if you spend any time in the CBD, you probably – you work in the CBD so you're probably used to it. Mm. But like if you take any time out and then, and then go back into that environment, you're like, fuck, there is a lot of people here. Most like and definitely. Brisbane is not a, not a huge town but, you know, you're talking about like a crossing, whatever, whatever sort of crossing you want to compare it to in – anywhere in the world and it's just Shib- like Shibuya what? it's like yeah people just fucking surging together in this mass across the road and if you if you're not walking in a straight line you get fucking knocked over and shit like that and that's a fucking that's a crazy energy and you you think about they have to every day basically and all day every day have to evacuate that many people like in and out of that area and it's just like ants fucking teeming like out and in and out and in and you're just moving in these big hordes and something is um you know there would be there would be tens of thousands of people to remove in the space of 90 minutes yeah something as important as as a train that stops and then all of a sudden those ants are fucking Pissed, o- pissed off yeah, and so angry about the, it. the energy in that station with everyone standing around it's it's winter time where we live now so by 10 past five at the moment mm. it is dark outside so chances are a lot of people are leaving to go to work in the dark getting home in the dark everyone's pissed off everyone's waiting trying to figure out what they're doing so i end up getting going fuck this i'm, I'm not waiting around at minimum an hour by the time I'd get home then would be an hour and a half at best. So at minimum, I could still be sitting there now. Who the fuck yeah. knows? So I, I was like, I'm going to just jump in an Uber halfway home and get picked up halfway home. So, But they had Uber obviously Uber onto realized. it. Uber was 2.6 surcharge on this shit, right? Shit. So end up, Opportunistic. End up, end up catch, costing me $30 to get home. But So I'm walking around seething and I'm like, no, nah, the less bucks you give, Happy you'll be. Fuck it. People are having a way harder day than I am in Definitely. this bitch right now. Like way harder. It's all good. Walk up to the Sofitel Hotel in Brisbane, which is probably up there with the most expensive hotels to stay in like the Brisbane metropolitan area. Bunch of boxing fucking people in boxing gear, like wild card Freddie Roach's gym, uh, where, who, like the head trainer for Manny Pacquiao. He's standing at like there. People gathered around outside, a couple of African-American fellas. I was like, oh shit, it's... Surely they, they must be staying here. A bunch of personalities have stayed there. Any time mm. the Australian rugby team come, they'll stay at the Sofitel. So I was like, I'm just going to linger on this driveway here for a little bit while I wait for this Uber. And uh, who walks out? Australian boxing royalty, Jeff Fennick. 
multiple world champion comes out. Mad. He's walked past. I was like, looks at me. I was like, holy shit, Jeff Fennick. And he's like, g'day, mate. Shook his hand. He goes, how you going? Yep, good. Yourself? Yeah, good, mate, good. So like, have, have a good night, Jeff. And he just hop, hops in his Uber. I was like, hey, well, that was all worth it. That yeah. was all worth it. I met a, I met a world champion tonight. But, yeah. So all good. Oh. Just another one to add to the list. I've been quite fortunate in my time with like uh, combat sports personalities. There's quite yeah. a few to add to my yeah. list now. So he's just another one. So Yeah. it's And like it's totally right, man. It's all about perspective. If you had have, you know, kept your, kept your angry head on, you might have fucking – Jumped into that cab without realizing he was there, you know. Yeah. And when he I, looks at me, what the fuck are you looking at, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Just all pissed it's, off it's, myself. It's that it's that mindfulness <laughs> stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, it's realizing what you actually are thinking, and then going, okay, is that? Am I just reacting to the way that I feel? Do I if I if I analyze these thoughts or think about them? Mm. It's, it's weird saying think about thoughts, yeah. you know. Yeah, oh, but there sure, is but there is an awareness sort of behind thoughts to mm. a certain extent where you can where you can see that you're doing something like and like, I, I I even notice it sort of if I'm stressed at work and then I go take my lunch break or something like that and I like to to go for a walk at lunch, just get the fuck out of the office, you know, go get Jack some off. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Go straight to like, the disabled yeah. cubicle. Just have a mouse into the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Every single lunch, like just to the smell of other men's oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I only ever do it if someone uh, else is in the other cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, no, nah, but <clears throat> thinking about like s- stresses and shit like that in that little space that you have, and it's like, wait a minute, I've got fucking thirty to forty minutes off. From any of this shit right now, I don't need to think about it. I'm not in that moment. I'm in. I'm in this park. I'm under. The, I'm under this. Under the sky now, mm. like not surrounded by lights and fucking desks and whatever else. But there's still a part of my mind that's going back, going back to that. You know, mm. whatever that stressor was, and and fucking thinking about that, and just being able to catch myself and be like, no, 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 bring it back to here. Look at this. This is beautiful. You're sitting here like, yep. and and even then doing that in the stressful situations or it's like washing the dishes. It's like I'm washing the dishes and you present in that moment and shit. And exactly. Like, next thing you know, you're shaking hands with a world champ. Yeah, pr- precisely too. And it wasn't <laughs> like, I That's went the from- the universe telling you yeah, shit. I went from seething hard about, oh, you know, not could be home another 90 minutes. This is bullshit. It's got like blah, blah, blah. Then, then you get gifted that, and I'm like, oh, I, te- I text my uh, text my dad. I text a buddy of yeah. mine who's a boxing aficionado. Yeah. Like my dad's like, I watched him in uh, I watched him in 1978 at the Marrickville RSL Club, like <laughs> fucking boxed and shit. And I'm like, oh, that's like a sick. Of it. Like, no, had have known that at the time, I would have would have hit him up. Like, yeah. would would have said that to Jeff. Yeah. Like, I'm sure he would have <laughs> appreciated the shit out of that. But he's uh, he, b- boxing royalty in Australia, and I'm assuming he is in Brisbane. Like, pretty safe fucking assumption <laughs> that the Australian boxing royalty is in town to watch Jeff Horn, Australia's own Jeff the Hornet Horn, take on Manny Pacquiao. It was Suncorp Stadium. Yeah. It's like, what sort of capacity are they look at? They've sold that, out right? a stadium. Really? They've really? sold it out. How, do, how does that work stadium-wise? So they're doing it, Anthony Joshua versus Klitschko, the other the heavyweight title fight that was recently on at Wembley. That was where they did have the fucking grandstands like yeah. fully populated. So yeah. is that what they're doing for Suncorp? I'm sure is they there? are, man. I'm oh, sure they are. They have to. I'd say it's like an Adele fucking Guns N' Roses type mm. thing where it's like you pay for the shitty seats to watch a screen basically yeah. and yeah. say say for you sure. were there. Pers- yeah, Gr- great analogy. That, that's the thing. It's a bucket list thing where, you know, yeah. I, I saw Manny Pacquiao. Like, yeah. And that's the – Yeah. as much as Jeff Horn is a – is a live chance in there? A good, I think, undefeated guy, Jeff Horn. I think he's sixteen and zero with one draw in, in there yeah. as well. So, uh, undefeated fella, he's got a chance. But let's face it, the vast majority of people that are coming out there to say, "I, I saw Manny Pacquiao." Mm. So, he, Manny's an absolute legend. He's a an absolute veteran now as well too. He's had over sixty professional fights now. Who knows how many amateur fights he had back in the Philippines, like back in the day? But an absolute superstar is. Been in the biggest grossing fight of all time against Floyd Mayweather, albeit a biggest grossing a, fight of yeah, all time. Yeah, albeit a disappointing fight at that. Probably it probably wasn't the best time, but in my opinion, that fight was probably made five, six, seven years too late. But it mm. took there's a lot of fucking around with drug testing and right. things like that behind the scenes. But Manny Pacquiao is still Manny Pacquiao. You don't lose that muscle memory. There's, many people are tipping him to be 
just too classy for Jeff Horn, but we'll know by Sunday night who gets their hand raised yeah. at, at the end of 12 rounds and go Je- got to go for Jeff Horn. Got to go for the Aussie to pull off the upset. I think it would it would really put that guy in the map and it'd probably be a good shot in the arm for boxing out here at the moment. Definitely. He's sort of the Australian boxing was Lucas Big Daddy Brown was close to a title shot. He's popped twice now, lost all momentum. He was fighting some guy at Punch Bowl RSL Club who was... Five and twenty-five, like True. just plucking it, that sort of record out of my ass, but it fucking wasn't much better than that, you know. Mm. So he's knocking on the door of a world title fight. If Jeff Horn can come get the belt in front of that sort of sold-out stadium, I think it'll it'll probably do massive pay-per-view out here as well. If it is on on Sunday afternoon out here, many people will buy that or bars, clubs, pubs, Caxton Street with a boxing fight down there. Imagine what it's like on Origin night. It'll be even more intense than that for mine down there, knowing that there's fucking violence on in that like legalized <laughs> violence in that fucking yeah. stadium down there right mate um shout out jeff horn is born 4th of february 1988 really dude's like uh 24 days older than yeah, me he's six days older <laughs> than me man. holy <laughs> shit mate, he's yeah. a uh he's imagine a that school teacher imagine that school teacher turned fucking savage what are you up to this weekend bristles oh, i'm fucking i'm yeah. fighting manny pacquiao in front of sixty thousand people at suncorp stadium yeah oh yeah <laughs> Just hear podcasting. I wonder what you're what, what, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having a little sneaky captains yeah, on a Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on. I know, yeah, I, know, I know he's making more cheddar. Like. I wonder what he's like. I wonder where his head's at right now on, on this Wednesday night, knowing that he's going to fight on Sunday. Not knowing enough about boxing. I don't know how much weight he has to cut. Yeah, I, true. I honestly wouldn't have a clue, Dan, how much these guys are weighing in at for this bout or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, mixed martial arts addicted, I can tell you. Five cards into the future, who's on these cards, yeah. who's who's co main eventing, shit like that, what weights, but there's that many boxing weight divisions where they're these guys are welterweight, but but that might be one hundred and fifty seven pounds or some shit like that. Where we're used to one seventy. I, I have yeah. genuinely have no idea of what, what weight these guys are fighting at, but I think Jeff would be probably posted up in a hotel room, maybe getting some light movement in at this point, a few pads, things like that. I think mm. all the hard sparring would be done at this point or You'd at least hope it would be. Yeah. Because you don't need I mean him in more, there getting I mean, wrecked. I mean more the headspace. Like, where do you reckon you're like... Uh, ex- super excited, I think. Yeah. He, he would be jumping out of his skin for this opportunity. Oh, he gets yeah. a, he gets to fight a legend in his own backyard. Mm. Like, uh, he's a Queenslander. He was a school teacher in Brisbane before From Brisbane, going yeah. on to this. So, this is an absolute dream come tr- true for Jeff Horn. The crowd will be behind him en masse. Like, yeah. he, a Brisbane boy, there'll be that state of origin atmosphere... Couldn't see anyone booing Manny though at the same time, right? Like yeah. Manny's getting fucking flamed as he's like, <laughs> he's like New South Wales running out at the cauldron. Like, <laughs> Take on Manny, fuck <laughs> him, Manny. Look, it's a it'll be a, a rowdy crowd and a, a hell of an experience. So, speaking of which, man, what was your uh, what was your take on game two? Man, uh, as a Blues fan, that was sheer heartbreak. Like to lose, have a ten mil ten nil lead at halftime at home. And not be able to put the t- Queensland to the sword like that was so disappointing. <laughs> it, it, re- it really was. But credit to Queensland, like that's just Queensland. The second that you have that old guard of, I honestly think that when uh, Dane Gagai scored his first try to get it back to sixteen twelve, uh, New South Wales shit themselves, and it became mm. Cameron Smith starts running running out of dummy half a bit more. Like he'd been really in a, like he'd, he'd carried a sternum injury into game one, right? And he ran out of d- dummy half twice in game one. Cameron Smith got tackled with the ball twice in the first game. That's all because he couldn't get tackled. He could tackle, but he didn't want anyone cracking him in the chest. Game two comes out. The second, it was sixteen twelve. He starts running the ball out of dummy half a lot more, and I thought New South Wales were guilty at times of ball watching. Like, oh, there's Cam. Oh, the look at oh he's. Oh, JT's out there. Fuck Bill. Oh, here comes Billy. It felt like that, man. It, mm. like, I think they went into their shell. They'd gone. They'd won three halves. Three halves of football to that point. They won both halves in game one. In game two, they led by ten at half time. So they're blowing them away. And I think they went. Andrew Johns came out and said they played really dumb football in that second half. I don't necessarily know if it was dumb, but they went away from what was working for them in a big, big way. And that's where the experience of Cam Smith. Cronk, Thurston, Billy Slater, they just know how to put teams to the sword in mm. that, in, win those big moments. And we just don't have those guys to do that at this point in time. That was so disappointing. We have to come up here to Queensland now for a decider, which we've won two of 10 
in deciders up here at this point. So we've won twenty yeah. percent of games up here in game three. So. Mate, what was what was with that Joey Johns reaction to it? He had like, he was like fed a, up, a, a he bizarre was, reaction almost. It was, like it was. He was. He was uh, still like visibly upset the next day and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he's like, still seething on. Uh, and they showed on the on the footy show on th- what, Thursday What was his night. actual gripe? Was it something like in particular about the uh, state of play, or it was about uh, Thurston? Thurston played eighty minutes with one shoulder in that game, and he was and that, Joey yeah, was in Joey was in, in disbelief in terms like, of like just running traffic at him. Like they said, trying to injure his shoulder, pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Like just knowing that their their key player and a key playmaker has an injury out there, who's not one of Hack the, the yeah. bomb. <laughs> exactly. Hack the bomb. Ralph Wiggum Shingard. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the, like they they wanted like Joey had the intention of if he was out there he would have sent traffic to him all night. But I don't think it is simple as that because on the first three tackles, Jonathan Thurston defends on the wing in that team, so he's not in the middle because he's the smallest player in the field. Like in, yeah. in terms of body weight, Thurston he's got the most heart out of anyone on the on the track. <laughs> but like the, the absolute greatest goat. of all, yeah, the greatest goat. of all time. The, the, there's not a, you, there's no one else even in that conversation no. with him anymore. He's no. he's, he's right there. Cam Smith would be a, would be second for me. Like, yeah, I mean Cam Smith, Lockyer, Joey, they're all up there, man. They're all up there. But there's something about JT, man, that you know, I I am fucking devastated that he is out for the season. Like, yeah. I I honestly go into fucking game three with way less confidence without him. It's oh, just like well, game one, like, game one, you got blown exactly. off the park, exactly, like, absolutely blown off the park. You know? And you watch the Cowboys, man. They just, it's, it's like he just has this fucking thing where he can bring teams back. Well, he can bring his teams back from deficits, fucking really late in the piece, and just, you know, plays with like you said, man, just such fucking heart and guts. Like he's just favorite, favorite for me too now, and a guy who the. Paul Gallon addressed his his troops in his last ever like in his last ever Origin series where like some of the rookies were getting their jerseys like getting their first crack at State of Origin, and he goes, "All oh, because you got a an Origin jersey doesn't mean you're an Origin player, so yeah. you need to go out there." Dane Gagai is a, an Origin <laughs> player. He's stuck at Newcastle at the moment. He's in a yeah. shit team, so he doesn't really get a chance to stand out that much. Yeah. He's got some fucking average blokes around him, That's young up and comers. Goes into a into a really shit hot backline. Behind a forward pack that had way more success, Dane Gagai was brilliant, and he has been in every Origin he's played. Like it's just a, an absolute dream to be on the end of that Queensland backline. Like Boyd's got the try scoring record when he was out on the wing. The Queensland yeah. wingers just score tries. Yeah, and like Gagai's basically like lost in the in the nights because you fucking don't even get those games televised, man. Like I haven't seen a single fucking nights game all season. No, and you might get one or two because yeah. of where they're placed on the ladder. Like you're not gonna see Knights games unless you're watching Foxtel. Yeah. So he, he he's a freak. I don't. It's a bit of a shame that Queensland do have the injuries. We're not gonna get the sort of that pure state of origin product. Whilst it's still gonna be what a hot bed, but uh, Darius Boyd did his thumb in that game. Darius is out for a minimum of six weeks. Really? So no, no Boyd, no Thurston for Queensland. But right, I didn't know about Boyd. Michael Fuck. Michael Morgan's who threw that flick pass to. Um, he played fucking two Dane Gagai for the for the match winner. Morgan's a freak. He goes into the starting six, and Munster from the Storm will come in and play centre for Queensland. In, in my opinion, so they, then they just got to because they bought Morgan off the bench. They need to bring someone else in for that interchange position. So basically, it's just the fucking maybe Cherry, storm maybe back Cherry, e- yeah, Cherry Evans maybe come back yeah. into that uh, thing. But yeah, they're fucking Manly just littered are, with Melbourne. Manly are playing all right. Manly have got fucking potential, man. They've Fuck got some yeah. really good players in the fucking Travoyevich brothers are fucking mm. guns. Marty it's just, um, had a, uh, they've had a bit of fucking, year. and they always seem to have a bit of checkered form. I don't know. Maybe in the last couple of years that I've been following, they, they, they seem to be like really fucking good on their day, and then they just go to rubbish. Big time. Trent Barrett is doing a good job there with them. He was on the That's brink right. of uh, almost having to argue for his position there at one point as as head coach. I had a, like, a couple of struggles last year, but he's done really well. And it's a thing where Craig Bellamy, the Melbourne Storm coach, has done really well with that too. But Barrett seems to have it in the early stages of a career where people that are on the rugby league scrap heap looking without a contract are now playing really well on his team. Like Aquila Uate, five, six, fuck, maybe even seven years ago, he was playing on the wing for New South Wales and Australia, stuck at Newcastle, fucking play, end up playing ordinary, the team's getting flogged, he wasn't into it. Goes to Manly, he's fucking playing the house down out there on, mm. on the wing for them. 
Curtis Siren, another one unwanted by the West Tigers. Like, got through to the Tigers because he's famous. His dad was a rugby league legend of that club, but Bronx wasn't getting the air. Spewing that that guy go. Yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> It'd be, imagine him in there now too. Oh. It'd probably create a salary cap nightmare having to fit yeah. like him in there as yeah. well too. But he, he's going to South. Is um is Milford like one of the most highest paid players in the NRL club wise? Yeah, he'd be up there. He'd be top ten. Thurston would be the highest paid? No. No? No, man, no. Um, Daly Cherry Evans was at one point? He's up there. Um, fucking Ben Hunt. <laughs> ben yeah, Hunt. Ben he's Hunt. on like 1.2 or something fucking next year up. at St. George. Like he's, at St. George? Going, yeah, man, he's going to St. George next oh, year. So. okay. Like, so it just all depends how they can fucking market crumble the cookie and shit like that. Just market that. themselves. Who needs what? Where to fit what? Like Thurston's copped. He's going for a mill in his next year up at the Cowboys for his last year, but... Tamalolo's on a million up there now too, so you got to. Thurston was willing to take a pay cut where he's like, "Look, I want, I want to stay up here. My family settled up here. Like, this is home for me. I'm a journeyman. I'm willing to like a million bucks is fine." Mm. Basically, where Cronk was getting shopped around when he left Melbourne, people were saying he might get up to like one four from like, from like West Tigers and shit like that potentially, but that hasn't Fuck happened. Man. But it's big cash and it's only going to get bigger as well. Yeah. And we've spoken about it before. You know, you watch the footy show and. These boys like on Bo Ryan segments and shit like that. It's like it looks fun as a motherfucker. Oh. It's like you know, it's high still school. the boys, man. Yeah, it's still for the, the boys. It is. Like, it's still the boys. And you're getting one point two to go out there and be a superstar, and then just fucking hang with the boys and mm-hmm. train and and fuck, man. Yeah. So Hats off to anyone who's made a fucking fist of that. As Dallin said, like yeah. the, the most previous yeah. potty, like just. Hanging out with your mates, even living abroad like that, I think would be fucking even better fucking as well. Fucking fun like experience, Getting man. out of Sydney or Brisbane, like living overseas. It just is, it seems to be an important thing for, for footy players and people and sports stars in general, really, to have a mind for what you're going to do mm. after sport because you live a long time after your athletic peak, you know? Long time retired in yeah. every sport yeah. too, every, every single sport where – that's why you've got to be careful with your money for this shit too, totally, right? Like, totally, It's a lot of these MMA guys right now. I think maybe even someone like BJ Penn where he was – he came onto the scene and is a Hall of Famer and a legend, but – He wasn't getting Conor he's, McGregor he's money. He's 10 years too early yeah. almost. So he's the great – he was BJ the great – was a how many, how many – Weight world champ before Connor ever did. Uh, yeah, oh, he did fifty five and seventy at that at that time. So he had two two weight world champion and geez, I, I don't even know what he would have been getting paid out there, but not uh, not anywhere close to like the McGregor or Daniel Cormier, mm. John Jones spec money of, of this day and age. So does that play a part in his mentality where he's like, no, I need I can get out there for another crack, just two more, two more, two more. Yeah. So he comes out in the. And the, and fighting is probably the worst one you could think of in terms the of that, worst. because it's like football. You're not really going to get picked if you're not in form, you know. Mm. Whereas fights, it's like you know we, we saw you uh, saw Bellator 180 on the fucking weekend, yeah. and that's that's a that's an example of some maybe sort of older fighters and in in probably uh, like arguably the greatest of all time, Fedor. Mm. Coming back and uh, and suffering a pretty sort of beatdown. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like I wouldn't say an easy loss. Like it was a double knockdown, which was fucking pretty exciting. Unique. But yeah, but um, it, it to, to me like yeah, it, it it's the whole sort of card. Like I, I've to be fair, it was the first Bellator card that I've actually mm. um, consciously watched from fucking beginning to end. Um, but still, I don't I don't think it was up there in terms of in terms of UFC, but it's a di- it's almost a different thing. Mm. And you do get to have that, let's have the fucking Chael v. Wandy fucking grudge match, you know? Let's get to see that. Let's yeah. get to see Matt Mitrion versus Fedor. Yeah, like, it's different. Yeah. It's a different yeah. sort of edge to it. It is. It's all, There's... You've got the ex sort of Hall of Fame legend freak mm. fights that they're making where there's there's talk now of Chuck v. Tito and they're, yeah. they're happy to do that, but they're happy to yeah. try and develop younger talent as well like for the, sure for the sure douglas lima and brett primus and those guys who won on that that card who are legitimate in their own right with their skill set so you've got the guys who are who have been there and done that they're going to pull in the ratings also while developing that talent but that's the, true the that's thing true. is the thing is with bellator the biggest concern is for them is they start to develop these superstars and the ufc goes hey, hey yeah. look at will brooks for example and that's this is the thing where 
Will Brooks was a really, really successful fighter in Bellator. It was like, everyone's like, geez, this guy's world class. He's coming, he's got a lot, got a loss to Ross Pearson. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So he comes in, everyone's like, geez, he's fucking whooping guys over there. There's still a bit of a gap in that competition, like, for sure, where Lorenz Larkin's in a title fight over there on the weekend yep. when he's probably ranked maybe between seven and 10 in, yeah. in the UFC. So. It's a, Maybe top it, ten. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, but yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, to it, me, to me, the like um, the older sort of fights, uh, there's there's a little element of of sadness to them for mm-hmm. me. Like I don't know, to like we're sort of saying, people that that are still doing something for the money and fighting seems to be a really tough one because oh. you're going in there to get you know more more head trauma basically. Mm. That that was BJ Penn in a nutshell on yeah. the card the following night where was UFC Oklahoma City. So they had Bellator on the Saturday, UFC on the Sunday. BJ Penn versus Dennis Seaver. Did UFC battle the, do that to um, avoid... To step aside from... I believe to avoid? so. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, like, no, that's a pay-per-view That's a there. Madison like, Square Garden. Yeah. yeah. Like, look, they're going to have their moment. Like we, We'll go in on the Sunday night. And I think like the Sunday night would have rated massively in yeah. like, American prime time anyway for that. But being a free-to-wear card. But that uh, BJ Penn Seaver, two 38-year-olds... BJ just gassed late in that fight. I think he ran. He look, looked I okay in the it. first couple yeah. of rounds. I saw some like, highlights. Some de- decent contests through two rounds. Like BJ had dropped him in the second, and there was a bit of BJ's top game and stuff like that. But that zip's not there at yeah. this point in time, and it's a guy who's who's out there, and you can think he's a fighter and a warrior and a legend. But enough's enough. Where you've got yeah. you're long time retired, like we mentioned earlier, and you've got a family, you got children, you're the dad. You can't be there drooling, getting your ass wiped because you're hung in too long in a sport. And I'd hate to see that happen yeah. to a and legend like, like that. BJ, I don't think it really would be a money thing. Like no, he could no, make fucking a... oodles of money off coaching clinics and fucking Seminars, all that sort of yeah. shit. Like, so I think for him, it's probably more of a personal challenge to himself. Which, which you know, I can respect that. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. There's there's it's there's hard to there's, him there's now. people that are probably like that, and then there are people that are doing it, mm. trying to trying to cash in and check. He's, but he's leading off the main card on a fight night. Like I don't reckon um, Chael would be fucking hard up for cash doing fuck doing no. his shit. He would be comfy as probably fuck, my Joe. fucking highlight of that whole card was his post fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did he bag out? A, did he bag out Tito in yeah, that post fight yeah. as well? Right. He was like. Uh, I tapped out Tito Ortiz and in less than one minute I fucking I just beat Vandy like and nice. then he and then he called out Fedor. And um nice. and uh and fucking Tito's there throwing shade at him. Tito tapped him out in a minute, but like yeah. when he was saying that he tapped Tito out. See, he did he accused that fight similar to Overeem uh Stipe, where Chael's like, he tapped. Like True. he legit tapped. True. He had him in a like a das or something. Mate, He's like, Tito who knows was, whether he probably didn't, but it's Tito Chael. was fucking ropeable, yeah. dude. Like he'd he, been drinking maybe. As well, I, d- I don't know, but he was like during the during the actual fight itself when Chow was going back to his corner because he was probably within earshot because he was in like cage cage side seats. And he's like, you got tag, pussy. You got tag, pussy. Like shit like that to chow like when he's in his fucking corner. And these are two dudes that have already fought mm. and they've already had their chance to fucking squash the beef. Same with Chael and Vandy. Like when oh, Chael yeah. got his hand raised, Vandy fucking pushed him twice after the bell and shit like that. And it's Vandy like... Vandy don't know how to act. No, man, man no. There's, there's no sportsmanship or, you know, like no. we, we've hashed this out now yeah. that I've fucking held you down and grinded you out for five... No, no, yeah, it's like, no. no. Let's I, hug it I, out, I man. Well done, man. I fucking kill you. Yeah. And, and I noticed this, this sort of like little strange thing that I don't know whether it was just me being analy- analytical on Bellator versus the UFC, but it seemed like the way that where Tito was located... And where they'd taken Wandy off, fucking Chael went to sort of exit the cage via that way. But security were like, no, 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 come this way. Because Tito was like fucking fuming, man. Really? And staring him down hard. I need, to, I need to see that. Yeah, there was this there was this weird sort of little moment. And, and, and fucking, yeah, Ch- Chael like sort of had to go out this other way. And I was just like, fuck, this is intense, man. Mm. This isn't like... You know, you see the Conor McGregor shit talk and stuff like that, and they make it quite, they make it quite theatrical and shit like mm. that, where you sort of like, ah, oh, yeah, you just buy yeah, into yeah, it's real yeah, fun, yeah. like knowing that they're probably not going to fight. Like, yeah, yeah, but I saw this, I saw this, you know, 
different element to it on the Bellator card somehow where it was like both of these guys want to fucking kill this bit dude. grubby. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, ooh, no, there's and, some and he's, shit here. And he's got balls enough to be like fucking... Spray him. Spraying them <laughs> on the microphone loud. And he said something else like... He um, hated New York. He, call, shit, he called yeah. out New York. Because he like, thought they were... I think that he... Was of the impression that they were booing him, but they right. were booing Tito. Like they were, right. I think the crowd during the fight are like "fuck you, Tito." Like a chant went around with that. So it's like right. it almost felt like there was some WWE shit in there. But that's yep. what you get with those sort of polarizing characters like that and too. Be- and and Bell- they are the characters. And I right? think Bellator borrows a bit more from WWE than than the likes of the UFC. The ramp with right. the ramp for walking that's in. That's dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's dog shit. I don't. I do not rate. There's them. a part okay. of me that there's the, the no. fucking nine year old WWE yeah. fan that, that fucking sure, rates man. it. Fucking Tito marching <laughs> down the ramp with his uh, American flag and his flame beanie. Uh, like, get out of here. No. Yeah. No. no. Not but now. But where they lost me was the fucking, they'd gotten both <laughs> Vandalay <laughs> Silver and Chael out into the, into the cage. They're fucking on the opposite sides of the cage, staring each other down, ready to go to war. They've just had all their, like, you know, nails and fucking. Mouth guard and everything checked, and um, and they're ready to fucking bang, mm. and then they make everyone go through first the Brazilian anthem that's played on this like, it's like a s- synthesizer playing it on one mm. one key keyboard, fucking playing on a tape deck that mm. fucking Vandy's there like hand over heart like <laughs> singing along to this shit, and then fucking they drag out this like marching military. Like unit or whatever Like six dudes come into the fucking octagon To do their like flag and fucking shouting ceremony Like And the the commentator's like Oh the pump and pageantry of Bellator or Like fucking And then after that they get Dave Navarro Off fucking Tattoo Nightmares Or wherever he fucking was yeah. To play like Basically Jimi Hendrix's version of of uh, Stars like, St- America the, yeah, what, Stars what, and Stripes Stars and Stripes <laughs> yeah, yeah, Like yeah, yeah. Just with heaps of fucking distortion and shit, yeah. like there with his big goatee wearing it, like in piercings and shit, and it's just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, let's get on with the fight. Can it's a we? mishmash. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like it feels so put, put together. It's like, yeah. nah, nah. The UFC branched out into that with that Conor McGregor card where they got uh, the Chad Mendes mm. and they got Sinead O'Connor to yeah. sing him out and, uh, and um, stained the dude stained. from stained whatever. It that sort of seemed name. like they they they. Thought it through with Sinead. They're like, yeah, yeah we'll get Sinead. It'll be awesome. Definitely. But we need someone for Chad. Yeah. Stained or available. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think he likes Stained or like had That's some right. sort of yeah. affiliation. Maybe he, but maybe he got I know. I know exactly what you mean, though. It's like, hey, Chael, we'll get Navarro. I'm sure, I'm sure Chael was thrilled. <laughs> 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 like, what? I'd love to, mate, I would love to ask him that. If I, if, I, if I could go up in the street to Chael Sonnen and ask him one question, it wouldn't be about the Anderson Silver fight or any of his like suspensions <laughs> or criminal charges or anything like that it would be man what was with navarro that night at the garden <laughs> like i think you'd give you an honest <laughs> answer too i think you'd appreciate that <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> what uh you have seen that night too what um didn't didn't see the card didn't the bj uh, yeah, card. Uh, yeah yeah didn't no, you didn't see that no. main event was fucking just Straight up ruined, controversial finish to a main where that's right. Kiesa and uh, Michael Kiesa and Kelvin Lee in Kiesa's backyard as well. He's an Oklahoma City boy, so he had the full home crowd there. Gets stuck in a, a pretty deep choke in uh, late late in the first round. Was not out. Uh, looked like he was struggling. Like the choke was absolutely in, but it's tap or nap in this game, man. It, yeah. it is tap or nap. He was not out, man. He, to me, I've, and I've seen it a good couple of times now on Instagram and stuff on those replays. It did not not look one bit like he was out. Granted, he, it's it's in deep, but he's going to go out on his shield at home. He'll he'll mm. just go out. And Yamasaki just comes in, sees sees that he's struggling, and just stops the fight. And Kiesa has got enough oxygen in him to he springs to his feet, man, and he screams in his face. He's like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "I did not tap. Like I'm not out." He's like, I'm a, I'm a black belt. Like, I've been in enough rear naked chokes, like, in my time. And, look, he was fucking deep. And who knows? He might very well might have been close to going out in another five seconds or something. But he's like, I was waiting for him to gas his arms out. That's mm. what he said at the post fight. He's like, he's got to choke in deep. He goes, I, I was never going out to that. I wasn't going to quit. And just jumps in and stops it. So yeah. the crowd felt robbed. And that was his own backyard. He's got his family in the crowd and shit. It was a 
pretty sour ending to what was a decent night. There were some fun fights on that uh, on that main card. Did a um, a girl shit her pants on that card? She did. Yeah, and on, on the main card, uh, Kish was this uh, young lass's surname. It was in a real nasty ground position with uh, Felice Herrig and Felice uh, Herrig. Yeah, bit of excrement on the mat when they uh, scrambled. So. Blamed a uh, bad weight cut, I think. Really, yeah. really, right? Yeah. But you, you'd probably be so nervous walking into the cage in that environment anyway that you, oh, I need to take a shit or yeah, a, I guess a nervous may, shit or may, she was defending a choke at the time, mm, I think. So it, it could have just been a lot of pressure a lot and of fucking squeeze. squeeze yeah, but that's uh. She they, was they like, continue to fight. She tweeted about it and she was like, hashtag shit happens. Yeah, I'll like, be, I'm a warrior. I'll be back. Good, good to see she laughed it off. It, Best way to yeah, handle yeah. it. Oh, it would have been w- way worse if she had tried to deny it. Yeah, like, no, no, I didn't. I didn't yeah. do shit. No. It's like, no, there's shit there's, all over the yeah. mat there. You just yeah. rolled. It's not on police. <laughs> like, no, it was yeah. definitely her. Yeah, it was you. It was you. But she, it's one of the things. That the fight wasn't stopped at that point yeah. either where um, there's a new rule that's being uh, addressed yeah. at this point that's going to get voted in where... If there's any excrement or any human waste of any variety, it's a, a stop fight in a TKO loss. Yeah, <laughs> like if you, right. If you shit on the mat, you lose. Like, right, yeah. F- play on. So nobody right. can shit strategically. No, no, yeah. Yeah, to get a no, contest, the, yeah. get a no contest exactly. if they're fucking losing. Oh, like, man, this cho- Kiesa, oh, this choke's in deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push you out a nugget. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just grunts all over Kevin Lee. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> that seems like the perfect final yeah. thought. Yeah. <laughs> Shitting <laughs> each other in MMA. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks again for fucking listening, folks. We uh, we've got some cool shit coming up that uh, that a few of you boys might might be aware of. But we've locked in some dates and uh, and shit. Yeah, we're looking forward to um, to the next couple of episodes. So we hope you're going to enjoy them too. Um, yeah. Anyways, we'll fucking we'll probably take a a couple of weeks hiatus and and come back at you sometime in July. Knock off nation. <laughs>